As our heroes conclude with their preparation and heading into the future to put an end to Black's nightmare, a very unexpected message is delivered by the Omni King Zeno as he wishes to speak to Goku immediately, but the question that's on everyone's mind is what for? Weeks of anticipation, speculation, and buildup have led us into these final moments before heading into the future. What's going on, Dragon Ball Super fans? Welcome to my official Dragon Ball Super episode 55 review and breakdown entitled, Hey, I Want to See Son Goku, a summon from the Omni King, leading into next week's exciting episode of Dragon Ball Super episode 56, where of course I believe every single Dragon Ball fan has been waiting for this moment as Black begins to engage Goku once again, this time with a different transformation. Now before I begin this video guys, keep in mind that this video will contain a massive amount of spoilers, so if you guys don't want anything ruined for you, simply fast forward the video, go watch the episode, come back so we can talk more Dragon Ball Super down in the comments. Don't cry in the comments about being spoiled by the thumbnail or any of that because nothing is being said or shown that you guys don't already know. Also be sure to check out the description down below for lots of goodies, updates, and contact information to where we can interact on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That way we can talk more Dragon Ball Super. And again, quick plugs before we begin. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button for all the latest in Dragon Ball news updates, What If Battle Xenoverse 2, and much more daily uploads and daily content for you all to watch and enjoy. So I thank you so much for supporting the channel greatly as I always do. Be sure to spread the word about Unreal ENT Gaming. The translations were provided by Herms98 on Twitter, just in case you guys are wondering how I was able to pick up on the dialogue prior to the subs coming out. And with that being said on to the episode now the moment we've all been waiting for in terms of super saiyan rose has finally been shown towards the end of dragon ball super episode 55 with super saiyan blue vegeta combating black first which again guys i thought was very very spectacular so i i'm guessing right from the get-go we're gonna have vegeta fight black first and of course with that being said we saw vegeta pretty much dish out some blows uh, towards Black while he was in his in his base form before transforming into Super Saiyan Rose. Towards the end of, uh, of the preview of next week's episode, we get to see Super Saiyan Blue Goku combating Super Saiyan Rose Black, which is going to be monumental. But before anything else, in this particular episode, we get to see very, very unique details as to Goku's relationship with the Omni King. Now, the episode pretty much starts off with Beerus pretty much really angry and upset on the fact that the Omni King has requested to see Goku, and everyone keeps stressing the fact that they they're keep telling Goku not to say anything to the Omni King it pertains to Black or the Time Machine because that could be a bad timing and of course with that being said the Omni King could be very mad which could result in destroying the entire universe with Beerus included so Goku wants to know why Beerus called him over and Goku thinks it's a bad timing because he wanted to leave on the Time Machine and go into the future and Beerus is really upset Beerus warns Goku to behave himself and not piss off the Omni King and with that, with that being said he says that the Omni King might destroy the entire universe with him included so Trunks is actually still home he's resting he's doing his thing while Boma actually touches up on the time machine preparing for them to leave and with that being said we have a little bit of scenery between those characters uh that includes Pilaf and Mai so we pan it over back to uh to Whis and Beerus and Goku and Whis actually explains to Goku uh about the Kaioshins and the Hot Kaioshins the God of Destruction relationship in which case is very similar to the manga so now we have an understanding that there is a relationship between the Kaioshins and the Hot Kaioshins without the Kaioshins being alive there cannot exist a God of Destruction, which ultimately means if a set of Kaioshins die off, then Beerus would die off too. So without the Kaioshins, Beerus can't exist. But they haven't really brought up the fact that, you know, if the God of Destruction has been present within Few Trunks' timeline, they're actually presuming that he's dead. They haven't really dove into that at all. But nevertheless, Beerus begins to freak out. And Goku's like looking at him, he's kind of smirking at him. And Beerus was pinching Goku's cheeks so hard that we see Goku have red cheeks towards the end. And with that being said, we pan on over back to Gowasu and Zamasu as they begin to observe the barbarians as they all fight. Until, of course, one of the barbarians comes across Gowasu and Zamasu and he begins to attack. Obviously, enough Zamasu deflecting one of the barbarians attacks first and also with that being said Gowasu knew that Zamasu was going to do something crazy and he kept hinting and he kept telling him no don't do it don't do it and Zamasu ended up cutting one of the barbarians in half he split him in half he completely ripped this dude from limb to limb and Gowasu was very very mad at this because the Kaioshins are not supposed to do that and there was no reason to kill the guy and of course with that being said that actually might change the course of history because you can't jump throughout time and affect anything that's going on you can't kill anybody 
he can't take anything uh, because that's going to upset the flow of time. And everyone keeps warning Goku, we pan over back to Goku, about, you know, behaving himself in front of the Omni King. The Supreme Kai kept telling him as well not to talk about the time machine or black because that's going to upset him. Um, and that also raises questions as well. That kind of, like, you know, leads questions to ask me if the Omni King is aware of anything. I'm pretty sure that the Omni King does have knowledge as to what the heck is going on because if you pay close attention to this after they all arrive to the Omni King's homeworld, they are actually greeted by a fighter who is supposed to be considered to be one of the top fighters around, one of the top five fighters ever. And actually, Whis even goes on record to say that this person that introduced them, uh, the Omni King's attendee, is even stronger than Whis, and Whis is no match for him. So that is such a scary thought to know that there exists a person out there who makes Whis look like an amateur, because Whis even went on record to say that he is absolutely no match for this guy so we don't know if he's a grand priest we don't know if he's one of the Omni Kings attendees in terms of uh, having to be a ranked fighter but of course with that being said he guides both the Supreme Kai Whis and Goku into the Omni Kings chamber in which case the Omni King being the Omni King he's sitting down and the reason why he called Goku there was because he wanted to play with him he wanted a friend the dude doesn't have friends everybody deserves to have at least one friend right so the Omni King uh, pretty much wanted to play with Goku and they're talking they're chit chatting until Goku decides to call the Omni King out and the Omni King was a little puzzled by that and everyone pretty much shat their pants because everyone freaks out on the fact that Goku calls out the Omni King but the Omni King actually likes it and he respects Goku for that and the Omni King gives Goku a button that will summon him if he pressed it and convinces the Omni King to let him get back home obviously enough and with that being said Goku promised the Omni King to bring him another uh, even a better friend obviously enough Goku wants to bring the Omni King some friends uh, but he doesn't want to make him mad right now. But of course, with that being said, the Omni King just wanted to make friends. He didn't He didn't really talk about the tournament at all. He didn't have any references to Black or the Time Machine. So the Omni King just wanted a friend and he gave Goku a button. Now, I think this button is going to play into effect when it comes to possibly Black or some other threat. Uh, if the gang is not able to match up to this threat, I do think uh, Goku might just easily summon the Omni King by pressing that button because obviously enough, I do think this is foreshadowing. He gave him that button for a reason and he told him, if you press this button, I will show up instantly. So that that that's actually pretty cool to know. So we pan it over back to Gawasu and Zamasu, and there is so much foreshadowing here. If you guys pay attention to the scene where Zamasu is talking to Gawasu, we see like these pinkish purplish leaves surrounding both of them and Zamasu thinks that evil must be eradicated but Gowasu tells Zamasu that there must be a balance between good and evil you can't really have the intentions of wiping out evil without there being good because without evil there can't be good and without good there can't be evil so Zamasu to himself says it is a sin to simply observe speaking as if he's somewhat of a god of destruction obviously enough we saw this before and we saw the tea change as well and Gowasu Gawasu didn't want to drink out of the tea because the tea drastically began began to change as as did Zamasu when he cut the dude in half because as he cut the dude in half we saw how Zamasu's demeanor changed he seemed as if he was enjoying it which is kind of like freaky uh, next week's episode is called a rematch with Goku Black introducing Super Saiyan Rose and uh, towards the end of the episode actually uh, Trunks finds Mai's hat but Mai isn't there so did Black capture her does he does he have her hot Hostage, is he gonna use her as bait? Uh, but nevertheless, before that even happens, um, you know, Zamasu is pretty much telling Gawasu that in order for there to be peace, uh, there must be a riddance of evil, there must be uh, a total annihilation of all people that create uh, problems within their society and their civilization, and Gawasu just keeps on telling him that that cannot be the case, and with that being said, he takes the earring back, so again with that, like that actually raises a lot of questions because since Gawasu took back the earring, does that mean that towards the end of episode 56, Zamasu might go on ahead and obtain that earring back by killing Gawasu? Not really sure on that because he took the earring back so but I mean the only reason why he gave him the earring was because he needed to be considered a Kaioshin in order to travel throughout time um, and of course with that being said we end the episode off with everyone going into the future and as I said earlier Black Goku is going to fight Vegeta he's going to fight Goku and Super Saiyan Rose was shown towards the very end and it looked absolutely sick it looked absolutely awesome 
And uh, with that being said, if I, it just looks like Vegeta is going to fight him first. And obviously enough, people might say, well, why Vegeta? I think Vegeta is going to have a crack at him first because of all the things that Black has done to his family and stuff. And with that being said, Goku was the first one to, you know, pretty much uh, draw first blood against Black when, they, when he first arrived into the past. So I'm pretty sure Vegeta is going to want to go on ahead and fight him first. So this was a very, very, like, very interesting episode because there's a lot of foreshadowing here. There's a lot of foreshadowing between Zamasu having to convert and totally become evil. Very similar to Anakin from uh, Star Wars with uh, Emperor Palpatine when he converted him into joining the dark side. So, but in this case, no one was converting Zamasu, he converted himself. And also with that being said, we see the transition between the Omni King and Goku. They're actually becoming friends and they have somewhat of an intertwining relationship. So this might play into an effect later. We're not entirely sure where this is gonna go. He gave him that button for a reason. And so whatever that reason may be, we're gonna find out very soon. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on Super Saiyan Rose fighting Vegeta, or at least fighting Goku, because we saw Black fight Vegeta and he was taking all of his blows easily. He was even smiling while fighting Vegeta. So Black obviously has gotten so strong He's able to take whatever Vegeta can dish out and more. And of course, towards the very end, knowing the fact that he's up against two Super Saiyan Blues, I'm pretty sure he's going to unleash Super Saiyan Rose. So let me know your overall thoughts, guys. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you guys are stoked for Super Saiyan Rose versus Super Saiyan Blue, punch that like button square in the face, guys. Leave your thoughts down below. If you guys cannot wait for episode 56, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more daily content. Tune in for the prediction video, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. We're all going to be arguing, debating, and talking Dragon Ball. Take it easy, guys, and God bless. Peace.